Well, honey. Young Tom. Got us all to uh, start off by telling you I got a little bit of cold this morning, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to sing. But I can tell. But look, I want, I want to start out by telling you a little bit about our ministry and what God has done through our ministry. And I'm by no means going to tell you this in a bragging type way, but after you hear this and you hear my story today, you'll understand that God can do big things through little people that will open up their hearts and their wills to God's will. Our ministry has been featured on worldwide television on the 700 Club, the same story that I'm fixing to tell you today. We've had major Christian magazines write stories about us. We've had hit songs, we've had number one songs, we've had songs that have stayed on, on the Christian country charts for 20 weeks in a row, the top 20 most requested, or 16 weeks in a row, I'm sorry. But see, I want to tell you, all of that is meaningless. All of that means nothing, just like King Solomon wrote this, it's meaningless. What does mean something is that God has sent me here today to tell the story that someone in this, in this church will be touched, or many someones will be touched. Guys, the, the Bible tells us, or Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, to put on the full armor of God, for we fight not against flesh and blood, but the rulers, the powers, and the principalities of the star world. The battles I fought in my past are nothing more than spiritual warfare, nothing more than Satan knowing I would be here singing for you today and telling you this story, doing his level best to stop this moment from ever happening. In 1 Timothy, Chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, Paul says something to Timothy that relates to me and my story. Paul says, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I will show mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. After hearing my story today, you'll understand there's nothing you've done in your past, nothing you're doing now, or nothing that you will ever do, but through the power of the blood of Jesus, that God will not forgive. Guys, this is my story.
Nail scarred hands still working on me. Still got a long way to go. Bending hearts, rebuilding road. But I'll make it there someday. If I keep handing the master my brain well, I'm just a careful Riding with Jesus Keeping my eyes on that golden tree And he never promised It's true would be easy Promised he'd never leave me. Well, I'm just a cowboy. Well, I'm just a cowboy. Riding with Jesus. Bill Rice Ranch in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I still remember that day well. I was only 14 years old when I got saved. But I remember that day well. I remember Dr. Paul J. Levine was preaching. I remember walking down the aisle and I remember the feeling I got when I kneeled at the altar of grace when Christ came into my life. You know, I look back at that now and I think that's kind of crazy, you know, that I was a city boy back then and, and I lived in, in Memphis, Tennessee, of all places. And the, I'm telling you, that's bad right there. It's even bad in 1970, I guess, man. But you know what? I think it's strange, though, that, that God has me doing what I'm Absolutely. But God has to be doing what I'm doing now and, and writing cowboy music and singing country music going to mainly to cowboy churches and sharing my story. Guys, after I came home uh, from that ranch, I was on fire for God. I wanted everybody to know what I knew and everybody to feel what I felt. After I came home, my brother walked into my bedroom one day, guys, and handed me an old Sears Silvertone guitar. How many of you old cowboys remember Sears Silvertones? Any of you? One or two of you that will admit it? Get them out of the Sears and Roebuck catalog. Y'all remember when they used to come, right? He handed me the Sears Silvertone guitar and he handed me a Roy Clark Big Note songbook. Y'all remember Roy Clark, right? Okay. There we go. We, we, we got some common ground. We can move on, right? But he handed me this and he said, he was a bit of a guitar player, and he said, here, learn to play this thing. You can have it if you want it. I'm not going to teach you to play it. If you want to play it, you're going to have to learn to play it yourself, right? Guys, I went through every note of that, of that book and every, every word of that book, trying my best to learn how to play this guitar. The only thing I ever learned how to play was, when I think he played it, man. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I remember, yeah, the preacher ain't believing I just broke out some deep purple in his church. Right? <laughs> Y'all remember smoke on the water, right? But all I could ever learn to play was that. And see, I was a teenage boy. I wanted teenage girls. And teenage girls didn't like deep purple. They liked air supply and stuff like that. Y'all remember that? Yeah. 
bring it back some bad memories in my life. But they wanted these love songs, guys, and I could not learn to play more than that on that guitar. My family took me to the Longcrest Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, when I was growing up, just like any teenage kid. The only thing I ever wanted was the preacher to shut up and close the service so I could go home, play with my friends, ride my bike, or whatever. One particular Sunday at church, guys, the preacher was preaching out of James chapter 4, verse 3. And it says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask for the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. He said, today I want to challenge you to do something, guys, and I want to challenge you to do the same thing. Now listen to me. He said, look, if you want God to give you a special gift or a talent or a blessing, or an anointing. He said, tell God what you'll do with that to glorify Him and see what happens. Man, I was sitting on the back row and I looked up and I thought, I wonder will that work with a serious silver tone guitar? I, I kid you not. So as soon as service was out, and I was pretty sure that it would, right? So when service was out, I went home, I didn't go play with my friends, what I did is I went into my bedroom. I took that old Sarah Silvertone guitar. I shut the door. I got on my knees at the side of my bed and I leaned that guitar up against my bed. And I said, God, now look, I'm young, but I ain't stupid. I know I'm fixing to talk to the creator of the universe, right? I mean, this guy made the grass. He made the trees. He made people. So if I'm going to ask him for anything, I'm going to ask for it all. I said, God, if you'll teach me how to play this guitar, how to sing, and how to write songs, I'll do it for your glory. And guess what, guys? God said, let's do it. Because from that day, I'm playing a guitar and singing and writing songs. It was like second nature to me. Oh, yeah. 
he's done for me. And every drop of blood he shed on Calvary, first ain't what I get glory. get to glory. churches and singing to glorify him. Started writing music that would glorify him. And back when I was that young, and you know, I still don't think I'm very good now, but boy, I was really bad back then. But you know how the old ladies in the church sometimes when a kid gets up and sings, they'll walk up and say, you know, you're going to be the next Johnny Cash. <laughs> that really bleeded, but it was mighty sweet of And I'm an old man now, so if my wife walks up to a younger person doing that and says, you're going to be Johnny Cash, I'll totally understand because she's old like me, right? And I got to ride. Y'all didn't like that, did you? The women in here didn't. But hey, I got to ride three hours home with her in a minute, too. So y'all remember that. Just give her some words of encouragement. But anyway, guys, I started going into churches and singing and, and doing what I could to glorify God's name with my talent, my music. I had one thing going against me when I was a kid. I know I'm a goofy-looking old man right now, but buddy, I was really a goofy-looking kid. I probably didn't weigh 80 pounds soaking wet. Had a big old head. Y'all go ahead and say it, boy, you still got a big head. Go ahead. Come on, I know y'all know us. And you look at it, boy, you're saying, yeah, yeah, you do. A lot of songs up here trying to get out with. I like you. Yeah, I'm going to pick on this guy over here now. He granted that. Go ahead. He don't care. But anyway, guys, you know, and I was skinny and I had a big head and I had burly hair. How many of you remember the horn rim glasses? Y'all remember them? I had some that poked up like that. I look like Batman. And they were coat by the bottom thick. And my parents hated my guts and they bought me those. I got. <laughs> I got picked on. I'm glad my daddy don't ever hear me say that. I got picked on a lot at school, man. I got bullied, and and uh, all I ever wanted was a friend. I remember what I told you in the beginning of this, and in Ephesians chapter six, verse eleven, it says, "Put on the full armor of God, because we fight not against flesh and blood." See, Satan was probably looking for a reason for you not to come to church this morning. He was trying to tell you something that you wouldn't come to church. And see, even me as a kid, I was on fire for God. And Satan seen that. Satan seen, all I got to do is get this boy a friend. And I can get him away. I can keep him from being in this church this Sunday. Guys, I was sitting on my, my driveway one day. One or one Friday night. Like I said, I was a goofy looking kid. I didn't have a date on a Friday night. So I'm sitting out here playing my guitar, right? Picking tunes and all this. And one of the cool kids come riding by on his chopper bicycle. Y'all remember them? Maybe you cut the forms off of one, put it on another. He was easy rider going down the road. This guy right here remembers, well, he grinning from ear to ear, man. And if you had some cards to go on the spokes, buddy, you was, you was uptown, wasn't you? But he come riding down the road and he stopped right in front of my driveway and I thought this is one of the kids who used to pick on me at school. So I thought, man, I'm here by myself, ain't bothering nobody on Friday night and he gonna stop here and beat me up in my own Friday night. <laughs> he sat out there for a while and I was picking songs and I was trying to be quiet because I was picking songs about God and I didn't want him to know I was doing that, right? After a few minutes he come riding up into the the driveway, and he said, man, you sing pretty good. He said, you know what he's scared? And he hate, and he wailing. I said, yeah. 
I lied, because I didn't. He'd sure beat me up if he would have asked me to play it, wouldn't he? But he said, we got a party going on down the street next weekend. He said, everybody's going to be there from school. He said, you ought to come on there and pick a few tunes. I said, man, I'd love to. He said, okay. So he set it up, guys, and he left it. And when he left, I went up into the house. Now, young people, I'm fixing to tell you something that's certainly going to blow your mind. Okay? I am older than the internet. I'm serious. You want to know what dinosaurs really look like? But see, we didn't have the internet back then. And guess what? We didn't have YouTube. Could you imagine a world without YouTube? You couldn't. Neither could I. But see, you couldn't go online and, and, and look at a song, How to Play Sweet Home Alabama. You had to do it like us old folks did it. You know how we did it? We got us a cassette tape player, a battery operated one. When the song would come on the radio, you would hold that tape player up to the radio. And the original mix. I am bringing back some really bad memories of the eight of guys. But you know what? I learned those songs. And I showed up at that party. You know, that's the first mistake, guys, I can remember making in my life. We're showing up at that point. But I started sitting around and, and picking these tunes, and I'm sitting on the stool, much like I'm doing right now, and I'm picking these tunes, and everybody's gathering around me. All the kids who used to pick on me, all the cool kids. Y'all call them cool anymore? No? Yeah? Peace out, dude. I like that's not big old cowboy. So how old are you, man? Twelve. Eighteen. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about how old do I act. I'm talking about how old is he? But, but anyway, I was sitting there picking these tunes and, and people were, were sitting around me. And they were listening to me. I've got a picture of this. Kelly said I need to start putting these pictures up on a big screen to show y'all stuff, man. But I've got a picture of this. And all these kids were accepting me. It wasn't too long, I'm sitting there and somebody taps me on the shoulder and I look around and this guy's handed me a tall boy Budweiser. Y'all remember them? They used to say tall boy on them. Do they still say tall boy on them? No? Well, this one guy said, I don't know, why you looking at me? <laughs> but he handed it to me and he said, here, Sager, you look thirsty. Drink this, and I did. And I drank another and I'll drink another. It wasn't too long after that I heard somebody from behind me guys say something I'd never heard anybody say in my life. Somebody hollered, pop, pop, pass, pop, pop, pass. Any of y'all know what that means? Yeah. Any old cowboys know what that means? A lot of head shaking, yeah. Preacher's not looking back there, guys. You can say it. <laughs> It wasn't too long, somebody tapped me on the shoulder and I looked around and the guy had a joint in his hand. He said, here, singer, hit this. You'll sound better. You'll sing better. And I did. And another. And another. And through the years, I started hanging out with these people. And I could tell God, I could, I could hear God telling me and telling me in my spirit that this is not the plans I had for your life. But see, I'm starting to get friends. And when I'm, I'm still this goofy looking kid, but now I'm not all about God and, and I'm hanging out with the cool kids and people are not picking on me anymore. If you picked on me at school, you got beat up. I hang out with these people, guys, throughout the years and, and a few years after all of this. One of them comes up to me and says, hey, we like the way you sing and, and you play guitar and write songs and old Bubba over here plays bass. Y'all got a Bubba in the house? Where Bubba? A lot of Bubba's. Bubba, big old boy too. How come all Alabama Bubba's are big? 
I usually pick on Bubba's deer and just say, man, I get over in Arkansas or something, I do this many Bubba's. You get into Alabama, y'all call them Bubba. Y'all got a reason to call them Bubba. But if any way that Obama plays bass or such and such plays keyboards or such and such plays drums, let's, let's start, like, put a band together and start playing in the honky tonks around town and make some money. I said, go. Because I'm into that. And we started playing in the honky tonks and the clubs and doing the circuits, guys. Next thing you know, man, we got people showing up to see us. There, we were packed. We had people waiting out in the parking lot to get in to see us play, to drink beer, and, and to dance when we were playing. But you know, guys, I, I began to figure out the truth in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Verse 33 that says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that when your mom and dad told you that if you hang out with trash or you hang out in a garbage dump, you're going to start smelling like trash? There's truth in that, God. Where? 
serve the same old Jesus. I don't do the same old thing. I'm a praying new man. 